I'm calling these the sleeves of fabulosity. Hello my lovelies, I hope that you've managed to have a fabulous week despite all the craziness going on in the world at this present time and I hope that you are keeping safe and well too in your little corner of the world. In today's video we are revisiting this pattern, Simplicity 8447, which I just can't seem to stop making and hacking and franken-hacking and turning into all sorts of things while sorting out through all of my stuff from my new sewing room, I re-found this vintage book about smocking and then also this that I'd picked up in a charity shop, Dayton's Smocking Book, which I wonder if they are any relative of mine. The company's still going and is based in Devon and they've been around since the 1800s. So when I came across these and was thinking about this, it ignited a spark of an idea. This is actually going to be a two-parter and actually a two-parter with a teensy little bonus because the pattern cutting part of the process ended up being a little bit more lengthy. I wanted to make sure that I explained how to create these bishop sleeves, sleeves of fabulosity really well so that if you want to give them a go you can follow very clearly my step by step. So the first video is taken up mainly with prepping the pattern, making the franken hacks and the beginning stages of the project. And then the second video, which will be with you on Sunday, is all about Dayton smocking. I hope that you are going to enjoy this unexpected two-parter and that it offers you a little bit of light relief in what can only be called the most turbulent of times. Before I jump in and get pattern cutting, I just want to say a huge thank you for all the lovely comments and support, especially recently about moving up into this sewing room. There's a lot of new faces subscribing and I cannot tell you how happy that makes me. It's so lovely to have this community. I love making these videos, I love sharing my passion for sewing and if you haven't already subscribed and you're enjoying spending time with me in my cottage by the sea, then I'd really love it if you subscribed and joined this lovely community of people who just basically love sewing and are kindred spirits. First of all I'm going to measure the cuff so that I can work out what this dimension of the sleeve is going to need to be because for traditional smocking it reduces the amount of material by about a third so whatever this measurement is this one needs to be about three times the amount that it reduces into. I feel like I'm saying scientific formulas and I'm not sure any of this makes sense but bear with me it does make sense. So I'm going to measure this and obviously this has got seam allowance on it so I'm just going to do a little mark there which you may or may not be able to see but trust me there is a little mark on here and then I'm going to measure in between and it's 25.8 this measurement then needs to be 75 centimeters at least I've then just measured the width of the cuff of the sleeve and it's 39 centimeters taking off the seam allowance so actually this has got to be about doubled in size when I make this pattern amendment. To turn this already lovely sleeve into a sleeve of fabulosity, what I'm gonna do is measure from the sleeve head down to just about where my elbow is because I want the volume to start at my elbow. So I've measured in 1.5 to account for seam allowance and then I've worked out that it's about 31, 32 centimetres, something like that. So this line, I'm just going to go with 32 here, is going to be my elbow line across. So I'm going to draw that onto the original pattern across there using my pattern master 
and then I'm going to be doing the fabulosity adjustment. I have pinned the top of the pattern, leaving that. There's method in my madness. I've used that elbow line that I've marked on there and I've aligned that with spots and crosses just to make life easier. And when I'm doing pattern cutting, I like to use um, steel head pins, not glass head pins or whatever these flat as possible because if you use uh, bobbly pins as I call them you you get sort of maneuverment in your ruler pattern master so that's why I use these pins so I'm gonna draw around this mark on all the notches etc and stop at this line and then I'm going to trace out this bit separately and on another piece of paper and then use this using a slash and spread method to open up the the space to make these lovely sleeves i've pinned the sleeve again this time in reverse so the top is free i'm going to trace out from the elbow round to the cuff here's the traced out panel I always write one, two, three, four. This is the elbow here. And then what I'm going to do is smash up here. Always have Guns N' Roses playing in my head when I say slash. So. And leave a little hinge, teeny bit of paper, so it makes spreading easier. It's not the end of the world if you if you don't, but if you can, do. So I've slashed up and I've put this on here. So this would be like this, and then by spreading to the desired new width, which I will measure in a minute, we're creating this new shape. Now, because it's quite a, an extreme volume at the cuff here, it's doing this here, but I know that that is quite wide at the elbow, so I'm going to redraw that shape in anyway so let's just measure so it's got to be like 75 ish centimeters which is really voluminous I'm not gonna add um any seam allowance to that so it's got to come out to sort of about here and a about here we want these points to still stay on that line and that's going to come out to there and i'm feeling instinctively that i'm not going to go quite so far i think i think we're going to be all right if we do this but we shall see you know, it's all a bit of a gambly gamble at this precise, precise moment in time. So pin that in place. Because I've not done smocking before, I'm kind of, I'm just winging it really. And hoping for the best. But because you have to do these lines of gathering before you do the decorative stitches i'm thinking and i may be wrong you know it has been known i don't like to admit it but it's been known that i'm wrong i figure that you can sort of adjust them to get them to the right proportions so whatever this is going to be it just has to go down into 25 centimeters and that's basically what I'm aiming for so I just have to maneuver and manipulate and make it work 
or just really cry because I'm very excited about my sleeves of fabulosity and I want it to work. I've redrawn in from the underarm to the elbow there, just taking that off. Do the same on this side. I know that it's not the same amount, but I don't think it's gonna massively make a difference. And then we have this new sleeve shape here. And we don't want an angle like this here. And you can use go by eye and you can just sweeten the line, as I like to say. So sweeten it there. And then we'll do the same on this side. And I think when I'm teaching people to pattern cut, one of the things that I would say is the majority of my sort of how I've learned to do things is just because over the years I've done such a variety of jobs and I've just been, I've just given it a go. It, it's just paper. And if this doesn't work, I, I can do it again. I mean, I want it to work in the, in the fabric. Make sure that is a right angle there. And I'm assuming that from there to there, I'm gonna have to just draw this in and just sort of make it make sense and then check that these two seams still go together. And I'll do that. I've cut out the sleeve, just not along the cuff. Join up to here, to the elbow, and as you can see, it's sort of, you're gonna need to just then keeping that point on the elbow together. I'm just gonna pin that and just just going to do a little mark there. There. That mark I've done on that side, I'm drawing that, just tracing it through. And then basically, there is the, the sleeve so far. The other amendment on this pattern. So this is the back here and it usually has a pleat but I folded that out because it makes me look like a tortoise and uh, that's not the look I'm going for. So this is between these two notches is gathered onto here. Now I want to run a few lines of smocking along here. I've seen it on lots of 1930s blouses. Can I find a picture to show you? No I cannot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to measure within the seam allowance here, whatever the measurement this is, I'm gonna to have to amend this and make this bigger. Uh, because this has got a grown on facing, it's a little bit of a jiggery pokery, but I think, I think I know how I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna show you that. So first thing, measure that work out how much this then needs to be, and then I'm gonna do the pattern adaptation. So basically we've got the sleeves of fabulosity and yoke of fabulosity. Here's the front, I've measured it, and it's 36 centimeters between these two points, and it needs to fit into 12 centimeters. So I've traced from the underarm just this this bit of the, the the blouse. I don't want to put lots of volume anywhere else. And I'm just gonna slash down both of these and along and just spread that open a little bit. I've cut the this section out, slashed it and spread it. I'm just eyeballing the amount because actually getting this as wide as it's supposed to be for the smocking it just makes this not workable. So I'm keeping the line of the neck because obviously we've got a collar and I've just done a more gentle curve and then trace around this armhole shape because the side seam and the armhole, all of that needs to stay the same. 
and I have just sort of squished this together and then matched that back up. I hope you found this pattern adaptation for bishop sleeves useful. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, then you can find lots more of my dressmaking and pattern drafting lessons over on Patreon at Tara School of Dressmaking. So do have a little look to see if that's something that you would enjoy. And check back on Sunday to see the second part of this video, where I'll be using this lovely fabric from Missy Mop to create my blouse and see how I do with the smocking. Thank you for spending time with me today while I pattern cut the sleeves of Fabulosity. Make sure that you check back for part two on Sunday, which is gonna be the smocking and a little bit of sewing. And there's also going to be one of my top tips, how to sew buttonholes on slippery fabric one of my lovely subscribers specifically asked for this, so you asked and your wish is my command.